Hi, welcome to Testimony Tuesday and with me today is uh, David Wallace. We've been friends for a long, long time and he's just come from golf and uh, had a successful round and <laughs> I wondered whether he would share his testimony with us. So David, first of all, um, we want to hear about your, your fat coming to faith in Christ, but just give us a little bit of background about yourself beforehand. A little bit of background. I was born in um, uh, Gippsland in a town called Maul. Uh, my father worked in a paper mill there. He, when I was about six, he was transferred to a paper mill in Botany, Sydney. So the whole family moved to Sydney. So I went to primary school in Maroubra Junction Primary School. I went to high school at Maroubra Boys High School. Uh, when I was... Um, in primary school, on Sunday, my parents, who were lapsed Anglicans, that had us all christened, is the word they used. Uh, they had us all christened. They were lapsed Anglicans, but they insisted we all go to Sunday school. So Sunday morning, they got us all out. I think gave us a shilling. It was about a mile and a half to Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Kingsford. And we walked to Sunday school. And my parents stayed home and read the paper. <laughs> right. uh, I'm the first Christian in my family, so it's interesting how it happened. How, I, how many in your family? How many kids? Uh, four children, four. and there were no Christians in my family. Uh, there were my parents were lapsed, I guess. Um, when I went to Sunday school and into upper primary, and uh, there was um, a, a missionary a child evangelist came one day. And I happened to be there, and he told a gospel story. I'm pretty sure it was about Jesus in the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Anyway, what happened to me was I thought, that's interesting. I think this story about Jesus is true. So that was the beginning of my step forward. I thought, you know what, I was convicted that the story about Jesus was probably true. And that then carried me along. And then um, through the work of the Holy Spirit and time and circumstances and the goodwill, I guess, of many Christians, uh, uh, I finally started attending. I was confirmed Anglican, but dropped out almost immediately after confirmation. Uh, that's a story in itself. Uh, the Anglican Church had nothing for a 14-year-old boy. And... Uh, I was disappointed that there were no tongues of fire or uh, wind <laughs> and so forth. Anyway, a friend, a gracious friend I'm still in contact with, took me to the Presbyterian Church through sport and um, PFA functions. I slowly became interested in the Christian life and I couldn't pick a day or a time and perhaps I've made many restarts in the Christian life. But I... I grew in that understanding. This story is true, and it's a great story. Fantastic, David. So there's no particular day, but it was that friend sharing with you and sharing with you. And uh, uh, was it in uh, what age were you when you were sort of? Uh, felt, yeah, this is we were perhaps fifteen. Uh, we were both in high school. Uh, he didn't go to my high school. Uh, we went to primary school together, and we went to university together, the same uni. Uh, it, that that story just continued. And one day I did, I went to church one evening at the Presbyterian Church. I came home thoroughly convicted that I was a born again Christian. So I stood in front of the television set on Sunday night in my lounge room and I announced to the family in a very bold voice, you've all got to become Christians. <laughs> and they nearly attacked me. I wasn't stoned. But uh, I was told to get out of the way. I was spoiling Sunday night at the movies, black and white. But anyway, that's another story. And then finally, I wanted to grow as a Christian but had no examples to follow. And people helped me there too. God is good and gracious and just and kind and drew me on and on. And then finally, when I graduated in pharmacy, I thought, you know what, I, sh I should try being a missionary and maybe when I'm mixing with these other missionaries, I'll become a really good Christian. So that was my, sounds like a silly plan now. So I applied to go to the New Hebrides as a missionary pharmacist. 
They didn't need me. Um, it's Vanuatu now. They didn't need me. They told me, try Papua New Guinea and why don't you try Australian Volunteers Abroad, a government organisation. So I, and what I liked about it was a one year. They paid you pocket money in your airfares and I was sent to a Lutheran mission hospital in Madang or out of Madang in the jungles of Papua New Guinea and it was um, a, a good step forward in my Christian life. So that gets us to New Guinea, Steve. <laughs> it, it does, and also it also gets you to meeting your wife, who was, who, who was an American who came from right in the heart of America, really, and was a missionary in Papua New Guinea at about 19 years of age. Would that be about right, as a very young girl? Uh, she was probably the youngest field missionary the American Lutheran Church sent. She might have been 18 when she left America, 19 when she arrived, came by ship and plane. And she'd been there two years when I arrived. And what happened uh, very quickly there? Well, it was, one day even... <laughs> it was the first hospital operating in Papua New Guinea after World War Two. It was a Lutheran mission hospital. It was made from army material from World War II. Uh, when I was posted at the pharmacy there, I, the pharmacy and the pathology laboratory were opposite each other. My wife was a pathology technician I could see her from day one when I arrived <laughs> when I arrived in uh, Yagam Hospital in near Papua, near Madang, Papua New, New Guinea. Um, God is good. It's a long story in which God has been gracious and kind and drawn me into the, this this precious gospel truth. And David, let's leap right forward now from um, from <clears throat> Papua New Guinea and. Uh, and come up to this present day, you you and Eunice are still really active in, uh, first of all, the Lutheran Church at Maruchidor. You run a home group. You do lots of helping and serving um, yes. uh, the, the older folks and things. Um, the Gospels made a really big impact on your life. Yes, and there's still much to learn and enjoy in the Christian life. Amen, indeed. <laughs> David, thank you for sharing a little bit about your life and your walk with God. Thank you, Stephen.